So let's look at problem number five on YDSE. And this question also not YDSE, it's more of an interference problem and very interesting one. It has few more points compared to other questions. Uh, so what is given here? Uh, CP represents a wavefront. So these two points are on the wavefront and wavefront properties, all points on the wavefront are in the same phase. So C and P rays are in the same phase. Okay, so at this point, they are in the same phase. And what has happened here? It depends on the wavefront, A on P position. So this ray reaches point P. Even this ray also, it gets reflected from the mirror here. And this also is, is reaching point P. So point P, two rays are reaching point P. And when two rays, and are these two rays coherent rays? Yes, if they are same source, it is coming up to reflection. They are so coherent rays and they will undergo interference. So what we need to do here, what is the condition so that we obtain a constructive interference at point P. And constructive interference, it's based on path difference. So there also we need to find out what is the path difference in the ray reaching from B and the ray which is starting from A and reaching point P after reflection. So let's do that. So phase and C and P are same. Now I look at uh, this here, reflection also is happening. So this additional point we need to take in account here. So we have done in case of wave map, uh, in case of wave motion on a string, what happens in case of a reflection? If the reflection is happening from a denser medium, which are a fixed medium, they're also are taken from fixed support or a denser medium. If the reflection happens, the reflected ray undergoes a phase change of pi or phase change of pi, this phase is equivalent to a path length of lambda by two. So whenever reflection is happening from a denser medium or from a uh, mirror kind of thing, mirror is equivalent of fixed support of a string. So here phase will change or we can, what we can, other way we can think of reflection from a denser medium is equivalent to traveling a path equal to lambda by two. So we can add at this point, a path length of lambda by two. That's what we need to look at. So uh, this was a mirror case. Uh, if this was air and this was glass, even then glass is uh, denser compared to air, again would have added lambda by two. But if we take the case, if this entire thing is in glass and reflection is happening from air, uh, if this was the case here, ray coming from glass getting reflected from air, which is rarer medium, in that case, there was no need to add, it will not undergo phase change, and then there's no need to add lambda by two. So these are points we need to keep in mind about what happens to phase and path length when reflection takes place from a denser or rarer medium or mirror. Right. So uh, we need to calculate here what is the path difference at, at, this, at this point, path difference is zero. So path difference comes because of C to O distance plus lambda by two plus O to P distance. So all we need to do, we need to find uh, length CO and OP in terms of D and theta here, D is given here. So let's look at this, how do we find OP? Uh, we have from, from here, we can form a right angle triangle here and this angle becomes theta. So OP is equal to D by cos theta. We get OP is equal to D by cos theta. And once we have OP, this length is equal to two theta. This again is a right angle triangle is given here. So we need OC, OC will be equal to OP cos two theta. So OP cos two theta. So uh, what is this length CO plus OP equal to? This becomes D by cos theta common, one plus cos two theta, which comes equal to 2D cos theta. That's the length here. So now let's apply the condition for constructive interference. Constructive interference, path difference has to be equal to integral multiple of lambda. So path difference, not only this physical path length, we also need to add lambda by two, which is extra path length on account of reflection from a denser medium or a mirror. So when you substitute it here, we find the value of cos theta. That's what we need to find. And this concept we apply in uh, many cases. So one more question may come to some students' mind. See, typically in case of interference, we take rays traveling in the same direction. Here, they are not traveling in the same direction. So would the constructive or destructive interference take place? 
Okay, so constructive destructive interference, what has to happen here? If one oscillation is like this, other oscillation also, the direction of oscillation has to be same. Then only they can add or cancel each other. So let's look at in this case. So if we understand light ray, light ray also is a transverse wave. And transverse wave we represent like this. So what does this line indicate? This line indicate oscillation perpendicular to plane of figure. And this is, uh, uh, sorry, this is perpendicular plane of figure and this is in the plane of figure. So when the two rays which are reaching here, if we look at these two part, oscillations perpendicular to the plane of figure, they are along the same line. And that's why they will fulfill the condition of interference, though these are not, these are, uh, the component of oscillation which lie in the plane of figure may not follow exactly uh, this particular equation or condition. But yet this follows. So whenever question is given, we assume yes, interference is taking place even though they are not traveling that same direction and condition is based on path difference being equal to integral multiple of lambda for constructive interference and uh, yeah, odd multiple of lambda by two in case of destructive interference.